Hi, this is Professor Fernandez working on class notes D in lesson nine. So this class notes, uh, this example asks us to verify 9.3 and I've, I've reproduced that down here. Um, I'll tell you what that is in a minute. Using 9.4, um, so that's up here. So let me first talk about 9.4 before we talk about how we use it to verify um, 9.3. So 9.4 up here is the definition of the determinant. And first thing I want to point out is that this is for a square matrix n by n. Second thing I'll point out is that this is a notation that looks very much like the absolute value. You know, like absolute value of negative 2 is 2. But it's not that, right? That is absolute value of a number. This is notation for the determinant of a matrix. So it just looks the same, but it means very different things. And then what is the actual definition? Well, so this definition says that determinant equals the sum over all the j's, and in our notation, j means columns, so the sum over all the columns of this product. All right, so what is this product? So let me just focus on that for a minute. So this product is aij, that's the ijth element of the matrix, times cij, that is the ijth cofactor. So in the previous video, I talked about cofactors, and we learned how to calculate those in terms of the minors of the matrix. So that explains why this is the um, other version of this formula. Um, but last thing I'll point out here to give you a little bit of a sense of what we're really doing, notice the freedom in this definition to choose whatever i you want. In other words, when you calculate the determinant using this formula, what you're doing first is choosing an I value, in other words, a row value. And then you are summing this particular product across all of the J values, all of the column values. So that's one of the reasons why this determinant formula is called a row expansion. You are free to choose the row. And that brings us to then um, 9.3 down here. So this is up in the notes. I'll scroll up to show you where I had mentioned um, that uh, after you know, defining the determinant of a two by two matrix in the notes, I had mentioned that this is the way that we can calculate the determinant of a three by three matrix. And notice that that's of course done as a linear combination of two by two matrix determinants, um, which is the, the whole uh, idea behind the more general matrix determinate definition that we just saw in equation 9.4. So anyway, 9.3 is what we want to verify. Notice here that I, I left this in red, um, foreshadowing this video, because we are using the first row of this matrix to expand the determinant about. So I'm going to scroll down, down back here to where we were in um, the example, and then start showing you how all that actually works out. So I've kind of pre-written here the start of all of this. So if I go back to this de uh, definition of the determinant, um, and I'm now trying to do it for this matrix, this is a three by three matrix, meaning that n equals three. So I'm gonna put a three over here. So we're summing from j equals one to three, um, a sub ij uh, minus one to the i plus j determinant of m i j. I have a choice of what I can be. Um, but again, because in 9.3, I was using the first row of the matrix. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to use a 1 here and put a 1 here and put a 1 here. In other words, I'm putting a 1 everywhere I see an i. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually work out this sum, term by term. So the j equals 1 term is a11 minus one to the one plus one, determinant m11, plus j equals two term, a12 minus one to the one plus two, determinant m12, and then plus the j equals three term, um, a13 minus one to the one plus three, determinant of m13. And then I'm just gonna go back to the definition of the matrix A that's up here and I am going to start uh, putting everything where it goes, right? So A11 is the entry in the first row, first column. That's A. Minus 1 squared is positive. Um, and then M11 is the matrix obtained by deleting the first row and the first column 
first row, first column. So that's going to be determinant of E, F, H, I. You can see already how this is reproducing the first term up here. So we are on the right track. Okay. And then I'm going to go here to the second term. A12 is, um, let's see, there was an uh, D I erased there. So A12, first row, second column, first row, second column, that's B. So plus B, and then minus 1 cubed is negative 1. Um, M12 is the matrix obtained by deleting the first row, first row, and second column. So I get determinant of D, F, G, I. Right? So again, this second term is negative B times that determinant, negative B times that determinant. So that reproduces the second term. And then the last bit here is plus A13. So A13 first row, third column. That's C up here. So plus C minus 1 to the fourth. So that's just 1. Determinant of M13. So I'm going to go up to the matrix, um, uh, cross out the first row and the third column. And I'm left with D, E, G, H. All right. Uh, and then we compare this last term. And indeed, this is C times that determinant, C times that determinant. So we have derived this formula using the definition above for the determinant. One last thing that I will mention that appears later in these notes. So I'm going to scroll down so you see it. Um, like I say here, the definition that I just focused on, 9.4, is a row expansion because you can pick any i value you want, and i's correspond to rows in our notation. But there is a similar definition where you can pick any column you want, right? So in this definition, you are adding along the rows, and the j value, the column value, is fixed. So you can choose any column value you want. This is a column expansion method, okay? And we'll see this in a future video down here. All right, so that's it for this video.